Hi everybody, it's TFT Tarot for Today, Divine Dabblings, and this is me, Oberon, and this is Goth Tarot. It's my weekly look into the shadows, the philosophies of darkness, the philosophies of emotiveness, what's making us feel depressed, or what is our constant state of being if we consider ourselves gothically inclined? What is it that pulls our strings, pushes our buttons? It's really an investigation into ourselves. So I'm going to start off with a, a general look, and this is collective reading, of the overall environment by calling that the dark design and using my gothic tarot for that. And I wanted to sing a little goth song, but I just couldn't figure out one to sing. So apologies for where that may have been indicated. It's kind of hard to do what I want <coughs> with just working a cappello, as they say. Um, <laughs> anything that can really cover up the flats and the sharps is a plus. So we'll have to see what I can do. Anyways, we want to find out what is the overall environmental factors for this month, this week, I'm sorry. And it's the reverse Ten of Cups. Well, that's pretty dramatic. I mean, I think that's about as sucky as it can get. The overall environment this week is really kind of sadness and feeling like, you know, you, you could feel alone, you feel like units, systems, families are breaking up around you, you know, and of course the only thing I can liken it to is of course these final weeks before the American election and, and it really has had a, a really emotional effect on many people. So this is very true. A lot of people don't feel happy. A lot of people feel really sad about their lives. I'm not going to say the future. This is now. So then, our next card <clears throat> comes from the Deviant Moon Tarot. And I'm calling this the things that we need to find out. And, of course, there's an implication that maybe these are some things we won't find out, but this may tell us that we should find this out. What we should know, what may be helpful or not. It could be that it's information we really need to know. Especially in the context of that first card. Boy, so the Deviant Moon Tarot, whoops, one too many there, there's my card, has given me more cups. It's not bad though. It's the Seven of Cups reversed. What we need to find out is that there is really only one choice. <laughs> One obvious decision to make, especially if it's in context to what I mentioned about the election, but it could be that if there is something that causes this profound sadness, there's only really going to be one way out of it. So whatever that means for any of us, you know, there can only be one right decision if if number one is correct, the I, the implication of you know some real sad times there, there may only be one credible way out of that. And of course, it does imply choosing something. So now we're going to move on to uh, position three. Let's see if I can make some room there. And position three comes from the ghost tarot. I wanted to call it the ghost story tarot. Because I like that movie and I like the book, The Ghost Story. It's really quite chilling. Anyways, a good book or movie to watch at this time of year for Halloween, I would highly recommend it. I think the movie was pretty good. It's a little dated, but not much. It's as good as most other ghost stories 
these days. So with the ghost tarot, what am I asking here? Um, I think I'm asking what is the dark shadows? What is it that will still haunt us or what is haunting us in all of this? So in other words, it's another way of looking at our own interior feelings on the matter. Number one was more or less the exterior, what's in our lives. How are we really dealing with it or what do we really need to understand about ourselves now? The dark shadows, what we're allowing to stay with us. You know, that's what a haunting is, a ghost. It's something that you can't get rid of. It stays with you. How am I perceiving that? How are our dark shadows? It's been coming up a lot lately in a lot of other readings, and I noticed it in some of our uh, friends' corollary readings whether in this position or reversed or not. Well, this is the reversed high priestess. Reversed high priestess. So what haunts us maybe is that we're not able to really deal or access properly with our more intuitive nature here, that maybe something in our instinctual intuitive forces would be more helpful to guide us right now in terms of, you know, making sure we make the right decision. But I guess this is really saying people are are not listening to what their instincts should be telling them. They're not thinking, they're thinking overly practically rather than mystically, intuitively, what really needs to happen here. And I know people are, are going to say, well, if you're talking about the election again, it's not a mystical, religious matter. It's common sense, which, of course, the high priestess reversed is. But I'm just going to tip that literally on its head and say, maybe it sort of wants you to think it's common sense. It's not really. All right, then. So finally, our final, final, final card is from... The Dark Grimoire, which as a tarot is very inspired by a Lovecraftian kind of thought. So I'm going to call this Dark Science because that's in a way what it is. is it's something that exists beyond the realms of our understanding. Is it magic or mysticism or is it a dark science? <clears throat> is it both? So with the dark grimoire, then, I'm looking at the idea behind the dark sciences. What is the real knowledge or information that will help us here? What is it that we really need to know and do, consequently? More so than any of these other cards may have shown us, you know, what we think we need to know or what we should know. What's really going to pull it into home gear? Oh, my goodness. Okay, I had to look at it because it was really hard to decide from the image what it meant. But, um, okay. It's the Two of Wands, and it's upright. And it shows two men that maybe, maybe this reminds me of Dee and Kelly from, you know, Legends Ago. It looks like somebody involved in something mystical art or spiritualistic art of some sort. And maybe the Two of Wands says that you know, a lot of times when we see it in other cards, we think of looking over the horizon and realizing there's still more you can expand on. And maybe that's an idea here, too, because, of course, if we are moving mystically, you know, into this idea about understanding our reality, what needs to happen in any decisions we have to make, maybe we have to figure this out on a really intuitive and therefore mystical level too, and really project ourselves through our, our dark science into understanding how these events can be shaped better for ourselves, how knowing about them actually does shape them better. And to some degree, those, those implications are, are here that we know about this, okay? So 
Gee, it gives me great delight then to offer the um, closing meditation from the Dark Light Oracle, which I like using here. And uh, it's shadow work and an oracle. It's two. It's two. It's two things in one. By the way, before I f forget, uh, don't forget to tune in to... Uh, TFT tomorrow night we're going to continue our uh, spin the wheel wheel of fortune chance for winning really cool uh, decks some are new some have only just been looked at uh, for example one of them is uh, today's journey tarot we also have Dungeons and Dragons tarot Buffy the Vampire Slayer tarot mystical journey Oracle spoopy Tarot, there's probably one other one there that I'm not forgetting. We gave away two on Sunday's live stream show, and we're going to give away two on tomorrow night's live stream show, or we hope to. Help us out. You do have to be a subscriber. All right, let me focus. Okay, so they're only red uh, upright. And it's solitude, number 26, alone with myself. There were always some sort of implications here, I suppose, that we are alone with ourselves, whether it's our sense, common sense, whether it's our choices that we have to make. So I have a feeling this one's going to... Kind of spell it out. Solitude, alone with myself. There are too many people around me and too much noise. My hectic life has such a frenzied rhythm. I have to take a break. And so do you. Find a place where you can be at peace, away from the world and alone. There are many things you need to take time to think about, but this is a work that has to be done in silence. Give yourself this moment of contemplation. Collect your thoughts and sort what your new priorities are. Then determine what road you want to follow from now on. This hour of solitude will give you the strength to better occupy your place in the world. And the affirmation. I keep away from the world for a moment. I wrap myself in solitude and follow my inner rhythms. I take this time to think about my life. So I like that, of course. Uh, meditation of any sort or inner reflection is always good. Within the context of these cards, I think it was always hinting at the idea, you know, uh, this may be a time of profound emotion for many people. And maybe we are better off with it ourselves rather than trying to convince people our view is the right one or being unable to see any value in somebody else's views. We don't have civil conversations with anyone anymore. So maybe that's all the more need to have them with ourselves, perhaps, and to understand that the great decisions we have to make are our own. They can't be influenced by what's happening with people we have emotional connections with who may may try to sway us their way for, for their own reasons, good or bad. At the end of the day, we're always behind by the fact that these decisions, and the high priestess stands in her own right for a decision, the binary quality there, um, we move on from them as we have to, that Although there is essential wrong and right from this more common sense point of view, people are mostly going to act 
in what they perceive as their own interest. And, and, and so we, we move on from there and we can only try to restore the balances some other day. And that's maybe where the dark science takes us to, along with the qualities of, of going inner for this time, and to realize that if things don't work out for us in the way that we think we, we should or that they should or that we want them to, then we have to go back and build better. All right, that's it for Goth Tarot, everyone. And thank you for listening to me sort of sermonize here. Uh, don't forget to watch tomorrow night's show. Get a chance to win a, a fabulous... Uh, a new tarot deck, <laughs> a tarot deck, or we can only do this for American or Canadian viewers. So unless you uh, are there, you know, you can uh, opt for the reading. Uh, we will do that for overseas or for anyone who requested. We'll do a personal reading and we'll get to, into the details of that later. Um, recorded reading that we'll send to you personally. Uh, Friday is my other show, Emotional Exchanges, somewhat lighter in tone, more about who's romantic with you or where the feelings are. And then Saturday is Happy Hour, which is our live question of positivity. You know what? We're doing the Unhappy Hour on Thursday. That's going to be tomorrow at 4 p.m. And that's sort of like... Uh, a semi-joke at the happy hour, but also the idea that as we move into the fourth quarter moon, there are things going on that we need to note and we need to figure out what's pushing our buttons again. It's sort of like a different version of Goth Tarot in a way with more of an emphasis on practical solutions to help you turn that frown upside down. So that's it pretty much for this week. Uh, we'll see everybody again next time. Bye.